Hi, welcome to Orozco's Lectures. I am Jose Orozco, and these are my lectures. This lecture is a Calculus 2 lecture. I hope you enjoy it. This is Chapter 7, Section 1. And Chapter 7 in general is Applications of Integration. And 7.1 specifically is area between area of a region between two curves. All right, so here we go. So let's say that I have two functions, right? I have this function here, and I've got this other function over here, something like this, right? <clears throat> and what I want to do here is I want to find the area in between these two curves in between A and B, all right? So I want to find out that area that I'm shading in green. Well, it turns out that what we can do here is that, well, let's do the following. And what we can do here is we can start with the bigger area. And so here we go. We're going to start with the bigger area. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Here we go. And then subtract the smaller area. So in here, what we can say is we can get rid of all this top stuff. And we're going to subtract this region down here, right? So that's the main idea there. That to figure out this area over here, what we're going to do is take the bigger area under the bigger curve and subtract the area under the smaller curve. All right. Um, so let's formally define that area. If F and G are continuous on the interval from A to B and G of X is less than or equal to F of X for all X in that interval from A to B then the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f and g and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is the following so well before I tell you what it is, let's uh, let's build it, All right? So let's look at what the what it would be. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at this and say, well, let's figure out what if we have just one rectangle here, right? And in here, that yellow curve represents um, F, and the blue curve represents G. So in here I'm taking just one rectangle, right? To represent stuff here. In this representative rectangle, again on top we have f of x, and on bottom in blue we've got g of x. But in here, in this representative rectangle, what is the height of it? Alright, well the height of it would be well at this point, whatever this point is, right? It would be the value of the top function minus the value of the bottom function. So in here we could say the height would be equal to um, f of x minus g of x at that specific point. I'm gonna call if I call this x sub i, these become sub i's. All right. And but what is the width? The width here would be delta x. So overall, 
if I want to have infinitely many of these rectangles in here, right? Because if you recall, that's how we add up the area there. What well, we're going to say the area is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i minus g of x sub i delta x. But we know that in here, that becomes just simply the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx instead of delta x now. All right. Um, so that's the visual there. Now, I don't want you to think of this as f minus g because it very much depends on what the value of what functions they are. But I want you to think of it this way. So I want you to think of it as the integral from a to b of the top function minus the bottom function. All right. So that's why that's how I want you to think about this this integral, the top function minus the bottom function. So let's get let's do some examples here. All right. Um. So here we go. Example A. So we're gonna say find the area of the region bounded by. We're going to say y equals 3x squared plus 7, y equals negative 2x from x equals 1 to x equals 3. All right. Now, in here, um, I'm going to start without the visual, all right, because I want you to see what we would do when we don't know what this graph looks like, all right? The visuals are great, but what if you didn't have a visual? Well, let's see. In here, we're saying that we're working between one and three. So we're working between one and three. So what we wanna do is we wanna plug in any value in there into both of these functions to figure out which function's on top. So I'm gonna call this y sub one and y sub two. So in y sub one, if I evaluate it at x equals two, what do we get? Well, we end up with 3 times 2 squared plus 7. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 7 is 19. If I evaluate y sub 2 at x equals 2, well, I end up with negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. So in here, these two essentially tell us that y sub 1 is bigger than y sub 2. <clears throat> so y sub 1 would be our top function. All right, so y sub 1 is top. And y sub 2 is bottom. So now we're going to say, well, our area now is the integral from 1 to 3, right? Because that's the interval that we were working with of the top function, which was 3x squared plus 7, minus the bottom function, which was negative 2x, and all of this dx. All right, so let's simplify that a little bit just so that. We have a simple integral and I end up with 3x squared plus 2x plus 7 dx, right? And if we integrate this, well, what do we get? We say the integral of 3x squared is x cubed plus the integral of 2x is x squared and the integral of 7 is 7x. And this gets evaluated from 1 to 3, right? So what do I get now? Well, I get plug in 3, so 3 cubed plus 3 squared plus 7 times 3 minus plug in 1, 1 cubed plus 1 squared plus 7 times 1, right? And then what does that give us? Well, 3, three cubed, excuse me, is 27 plus 3 squared, that's 9. 7 times 3, 21 minus <clears throat> 1 plus 1 plus 7. And what do we get now? Well, 27, well, 9 plus 21, that's 30. 30 plus 27 is 57. 57 minus 9 gives us 48. All right. So the area there is 4 units squared. All right. 48 units squared, excuse me. Now, 
Now I can give you the visual. Now that we already uh, have an answer, let me give you the visual. So this is the visual. And again, notice how we did that problem without at all looking at what the visual was. And essentially it looks something like this. Um, negative 2x looks like this. Right, so that's y equals negative 2x. And then the other one, um, 3x squared plus 7. That looks something like this. All right. Where this is a parabola. And what we found is that the area between here, starting at 1, going all the way up to 3, this area is an area of 48 units squared. And yeah, maybe I'll write that as 48. Actually, write the word. All right. And by there, by units, we mean, well, what if it was, if we were working with feet, it would be square feet. If we were working with, um, with meters, it would be square meters, so on and so forth. All right, next one. B. Let's say that I had y equals, or y sub 1 equals x cubed over 3 minus x, and y sub 2 being just x over 3. All right. And we're going to do this from 2 to 4. So again, to figure out which is the, the top one and which is the bottom one, what we want to do is plug in the value in between these two. All right. So let's say that I plug in 3. So I'm going to evaluate y sub 1 at x equals 3. And I end up with 3 cubed over 3 minus 3. So that's 3 cubed 27 over 3 is 9 minus 3 is 6. If I evaluate y sub 2 at x equals 3, I end up with 3 over 3, which gives me just 1. So, again, y sub 1 is bigger in this case. So, what we do now is our area is the integral from 2 to 4 of the top function, x cubed over 3 minus x, minus the bottom function, which was x over 3. And all of this dx and what does that give us well <clears throat> this negative x and negative x over 3 they can be combined so we end up with the integral from 2 to 4 of x cubed over 3 minus 4 thirds x dx and if i integrate here i end up with x to the fourth over 12 minus um, 4 over 6 x squared. This 4 over 6 reduces to saying 2 thirds, right? Evaluated from 2 to 4. Plug in the top, so I have 4 to the 4th over 12 minus 2 thirds times 4 squared. And then minus, plug in the bottom, 2 to the 4th over 12 minus 2 thirds times 2 squared. And, well, what does that give us? Well, 4 to the 4th. 4 to the 4th, that's 4 times 4, which is 64. And then, excuse me, 4 times 4, which is 16. Then times 4, which is 64. And then times 4 again, which is 256. So we get 256 over 12 minus 4 squared, 16 times 2 is 32. So we have time, minus 32 thirds minus 2 to the 4th, that's 16. 2 squared times 2, well, that's 2 to the third. So I end up with 8 thirds. Combining like terms here. So let's say I've got 256 twelves minus 16 twelves. That's 240 twelves minus negative 32 twelves minus a negive 8 twelves. Well, minus, ne I said that wrong. Negative 32 thirds minus a negative 8 thirds. Minus negative is plus. So negative 32 plus 8 is negative 24. So we get negative 4 twelfths, excuse me, negative 24 thirds. And from here, 240 divided by 12. Well, 12, 12 goes into 24 two times. So 12 goes into 240, 
20 times. 3 goes into 24, 8 times, giving me an answer of 12. And again, units squared. And I'll quickly do a visual here. All right. Um, this is essentially what we've got, at least in this region. something like this and like that all right and what we found here was from two to four oh i should zoom this out a little differently uh that's i guess i guess we can do this this way that's fine here's two here's four all right, and what we found was this region. Not drawn to scale, of course. All right. Um, all right. So, in both of these examples, I told you where where the x values were, right? I told you from two to four. And similarly over here, I said from one to three. But let's see what happens when I don't give you any bounds. What do we do there? So next one, example C. And this is gonna be y sub one is equal to two x plus five. And y sub two equals two x squared plus 2x plus 1. Um, so yes, notice again that in here I did not give you any bounds, right? I didn't say from what x value to what other x value. Well, in here we're just implying that our area is going to be just between these two functions. So what we need to do here is figure out where they intersect. And how do we do that? We set them equal to each other. So let's say I've got x squared plus 2x plus 1 it equal to 2x plus 5. Move everything to the same side. x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So I subtracted 2x, subtracted 5. And factor, so x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. So that x equals negative 2 or x equals 2. All right, so that gives us where they intersect at those x values, at negative 2 and at positive 2. Now to figure out, um, which one's bigger within that region? Well, we just need to bind, excuse me, we just need to plug in one of the values in between there. So let's say y sub one, let's evaluate it at x equals zero. So when I do that, well, I end up with five. And y sub two, when I evaluate at x equals zero, well, when I do that, I end up with one. So in here, y sub one is our top function. And y sub 2 is our bottom function. All right, so now, what do we get? Our area is going to be the integral from negative 2 to 2 of the top function, which we said was y sub 1, so 2x plus 5, minus the bottom function, y sub 2, which we said was x squared plus 2x plus 1 dx. And what does that give us? Well, let's uh, let's simplify this um, a little bit. So we end up with the integral from negative two to two of combining like terms here, I end up with negative x squared plus four, right? This two x minus two x goes away. Five minus one is positive four and negative x squared is right there. And when we integrate this, well, what do we get? We end up with negative x cubed over three plus 4x evaluated from negative 2 to 2 and when we plug in these values we'll plug in the top first so I end up with a negative of 2 cubed over 3 plus 4 times 2 minus the negative of negative 2 cubed over 3 plus 4 times negative 2 which now gives me well 2 cubed is 8, so I have negative 8 over 3, plus 4 times 2 is 8, minus 
negative 2 cubed is negative 8 with a negative in the front becomes positive 8. So I have um, 8 thirds and then 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 thirds minus 8 thirds that gives me negative 16 thirds. 8 minus negative 8 that's 8 plus 8 which is 16. So in what we need to do now is come up with a common denominator, which is 3. This 16 becomes a 48 because 48, excuse me, because 16 times 3 is 48, and then negative 16 plus 48 is 32. So we end up with 32 thirds units squared. All right. Um, all right. So let's do one more that's similar to this and then we'll we'll kick it up a notch so let's say that i have um the d example d all right so we have um y equals x minus one cube that's y sub one equals that and y sub two is equal to just x minus one all right and what we want to do here is we want to see um which we want to find the area in between those two curves right and to do that well we got to figure out where they intersect so let's see set them equal to each other first so i have x minus one cubed it's equal to x minus one move this to the other side x minus one cubed minus x minus one equals zero I see they both have an x minus 1. Factor that out. x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared minus 1 equals 0. Expand this. x minus 1 times, well, if I expand that, what do I get? I get x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then we have this minus 1. Um, <clears throat> combine like terms here. Right, if I combine like terms here, well, what do I end up with? So I have x minus 1 times x squared minus 2x. And then plus 1 minus 1 goes away. So fully factoring this, I end up with that. Right? Um, so, oh, wait. Look at that. I made a mistake. That 2 should be. That one right here should be a two. All right, so now, um, so what does this tell us? That it gives us now the values of x equals one, x equals zero, and x equals two. So we've got three places where this function intersects, where these two functions intersect. All right, so what are we gonna do now? Well, that means we need to split up our interval between zero, one, and two and then see which functions on top and which ones on bottom at each piece so for example let's say that we have in here at one half we're going to see what happens there right so one half minus one that's negative one half so why so let's see so at x equals one half we had that y sub two was negative one half right because it's one half minus one uh, y sub 1, however, is going to be negative 1 half cubed, which is negative 1 eighth. So in this region, well, what's bigger, negative 1 half or negative 1 eighth? Well, negative 1 eighth is bigger. So y sub 1 is bigger than y sub 2. Now let's see what happens in the next region. So for example, let's plug in 3 halves. Well, let's see. y sub 2. y sub 2. I'm starting with that one because it was just x minus 1. So 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. y sub 1 was that but cubed. So 1 half cubed, which is 1 eighth in here. Which one was bigger? y sub 2. So y sub 2 is the bigger one, so it's the top one. And y sub 1 is the bottom one there. So now our area is going to be the sum of the area between the curves at from each uh, interval, right? So I'm going to have the interval, excuse me, the integral from zero to one of 
y sub 1, the top function, minus y sub 2, dx. And then that plus the integral from 1 to 2 of y sub 2 minus y sub 1, dx. Right? The top function minus the bottom function. And just as a reminder, y sub 1 was x minus 1 cubed. And y sub 2 was just x minus 1. So what I get here is the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 1 cubed minus x minus 1 dx plus the integral from 1 to 2 of y sub 2 which was x minus 1 minus x minus 1 cubed dx all right now um in here i don't want to expand all this stuff out so i'm going to do a simple substitution i'm going to say let u be equal to x minus 1. Then du would be just dx. When x equals 0, u equals negative 1. When x equals 1, u equals negative 2. And when x equals 2, u equals 1. Right? So what does that do for us now? This integral now becomes the integral from originally 0 to 1. Now negative 1 to negative 2. Um, Oh, sorry, that's messed up. That should be a zero. Negative one minus one is zero. Look at that. That should be a zero. There we go. So from negative one to zero um, of u cubed minus u du plus the integral from originally one to two. So now it's a zero to one of u minus u cubed du. And well, what does that give us? That's going to give us u to the fourth. Well, let's do it in the next line. u to the fourth over 4 minus u squared over 2. Evaluate from negative 1 to 0 plus um, u squared over 2 minus u to the fourth over 4. Evaluate it from 0 to 1. And well, what does that give us? Well, plug in 0. I end up with 0 minus 0 minus plug in negative 1. Well, negative 1 to the 4th, that's 1. So I got 1 fourth minus 1 half, right? Negative 1 squared is just positive 1. So that's the second one there. Plus plug in 1 into here. I end up with 1 half minus 1 fourth minus plug in 0. 0 minus 0. Okay, so let's see what we get. 1 quarter minus, all right, so we have 0 minus 0 goes away. This negative of 1 quarter minus 1 half, that's negative 1 quarter, right? 1 quarter minus 1 half, 1 half is 2 quarters. So 1 quarter minus 2 quarters is negative, negative 1 quarter. Plus 1 half minus 1 quarter, that's going to be 1 quarter. The zeros go away. Negative 1 quarter plus 1 quarter. So this is positive one quarter plus one quarter is one half. So our answer there is just one half. All right. Now, in in all these examples, um, we were doing everything with in terms of originally in terms of x, right? And the reason for that is because we had uh, functions of x, right? I have y as a function of x in, in both of these, in, in every single one of these. Every single one of these were y as a function of x. But we don't necessarily need to do uh, functions of x. We can do functions of y. And what I mean by that is it's not just a simple um, um, change in variable. What I'm talking about is horizontal representative rectangles all right so let's do an example i don't know what i said g i think i meant e there we go so find the area bounded by um x equals 3 minus y squared and x equals y plus 1 all right um so in here well 
we're gonna start this the same way and and by that i mean i'll give you the well let's start with the visual but we are going to start this the same way but this time i'll give you the visual first just so you can get an idea of of what's going on here all right so i've got three minus y squared three minus y squared looks like this right it is a sideways facing parabola all right and maybe i should have done that in yellow that's okay um the next one y plus one x equals y plus one that looks like this um it is this line this is x equals y plus one and this is x is equal to three minus y squared all right now in here we still want to do the top function minus the bottom function but now because we've got functions of y we can imagine having this guy here all right and in here to him which the top function well that would be the top function and this would be the bottom function right so that's what we want to think about it all right now that was doing this graphically but let's figure things out without the graph we already have an idea of which is supposed to be the bigger function and the smaller function right but we still need to figure out what this value is and also what this value is because we got to figure out where we're working all right um now to to be a little bit more exact here if you really want to think about the representative rectangle well let's do this so here's my representative rectangle the width here is going to be delta y now but the height in this case is going to be well this function so I'm going to call them x sub 1 and x sub 2. So it's going to be x sub 1 minus x sub 2. Right? Those two different functions there. So you could think of these as, well, if I call this f of y and this g of y, you could think of this as f of y minus g of y. All right? And at that point, we would say, well, the area is going to be the integral. Actually, well, before that, we still got to figure out where they intersect so let's set them equal to each other 3 minus y squared is equal to y plus 1 i'm going to move everything to the right so 0 is equal to well this y squared over so y squared plus y 1 minus 3 is negative 2. factoring this i end up with y plus 2 times y minus 1 giving me the values of y equals 1 and y equals negative 2. So here this is negative 2 and this is 1. So now, now we can do our integral. Then the area is going to be the integral from negative 2 to 1 of the top function minus the bottom function. Oh, let's test that out before we actually do this integral. So by that I mean, in here we already know the visual, right? But what if we didn't have the visual? How would we know? Well, let's, uh, let's test out. So between 1 and negative 2, something that we can test out is the value of zero so what happens when when y equals zero well um x sub one this first one i end up with three x sub two the second one i end up with one so this is the top function and this is the bottom function which made sense already right because we had that from the graph but now we know algebraically how to figure it out now now we can do the integral so we're going to say the integral the area is the integral from negative 2 to 1 of the top function, which we said was x sub 1, which is 3 minus y squared, minus the bottom function, which we said was x sub 2, which is just y plus 1. All right, and dy because our bounds are in terms of y, right, um, from up here. All right, so let's go ahead and integrate this. So actually, let's reduce first. Let's combine like terms. So I've got the integral from negative 2 to 1 of 3 minus 1 is 2. So I'm going to write it as 2 minus y minus y squared dy. Integrating these, well, what do I get? The integral of 2 is 2y minus y squared over 2 minus y cubed over 3 evaluated from negative 2 to 1 plug in the top 
2 times 1 minus 1 squared over 2 minus 1 cubed over 3 minus, plug in the bottom, 2 times negative 2 minus negative 2 squared over 2 minus negative 2 cubed over 3. That's a 3. All right. Now, let's simplify this a little bit. So we have, in the first thing here, I have 2 minus 1 half minus 1 third. Cool. In the next part, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 squared is 4, so minus 4 halves. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8, so I have plus 8 thirds. Let's see, combining like terms. 2 minus negative 4, 6. Negative 1 minus negative 4 halves. So negative 1 half minus negative 4 halves is a positive 3 halves. Negative one third minus eight thirds is negative nine thirds. Negative nine thirds is three. So six minus three is three. So three plus three halves, common denominator of two. This becomes six plus three, which is nine halves. All right. So that entire region there, um, perhaps so. I'll line it in yellow here. This entire region has that area that we just found. All right. Cool. Next one. So that was E, right? E, maybe? E, yeah. F. So let's say that we have um, the function is g of y is equal to y times 2 minus y, and the function f of y is equal to negative y. Right? And again, here we're doing the same exact thing as before. All we're doing here is just a different um, a different variable. All right? It's still going to be the same exact idea of the bigger function minus the smaller function. So Let's go ahead and see what we get here. So I start first by setting these two equal to each other. So y times 2 minus y is equal to negative y. Put everything on the same side. I'm also going to expand. So y times 2 is 2y minus y squared. And then plus y equals 0. Combine like terms. 3y minus y squared equals 0. Factor y times 3 minus y squared. Not y squared times y equals 0. So either y equals 0 or y equals 3. All right. So that gives us the region that we're working in. So now let's see what's something in there that we can use to figure out which is the bigger function. Well, let's figure out what happens when y is 1. So what we can do here is, well, our function g, so g of 1 would be 1 times 2 minus 1 which is 1. Our function f, f of 1, would be negative of 1, which is negative 1. So in here, um, our g function is our top function, and the f function is the bottom function. So <clears throat> what we can do now is we can do the integral for the area. is the integral from 0 to 3 of the top function, which was g. And that was um, y times 2 minus y minus the bottom function, which was f, which was negative y. And not dx, dy. Expanding this a little bit and simplifying, well, I'm subtracting that's negative y, which is that's essentially what I did over here. So I know that I'm going to get 3y minus y squared dy giving me well the integral of that would be three halves y squared minus y cubed over three evaluated from zero to three plug in the top so i have three halves times three squared minus three cubed over three 
minus zero minus zero, right? Plugging in that zero into the y's does nothing. So at this point we say, well, what do we get here? Three squared, that's nine times three is 27. So 27 halves minus three cubed is 27. 27 over three is nine. Common denominator is gonna be two, leaving this to 27 and changing that to an 18, giving me an answer of nine halves. All right, hmm. that's coincidence that that's the same answer as the last problem, nine halves. Cool, I didn't even realize that. All right, so we got an area of nine halves, but now let's look at the visual for this one. Notice again, we started without a visual. All right, so so let's let's see what the visual is here. So, um, <clears throat> it looks something like this. All right. Um, oh, that was awful. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that was not great. Well, this value up here is at three. And oh, look at that. I did my, pro, my, my sideways parabola all wrong there. So it should look like this. Something like that. All right. All right. So what we found there was what I'm going to, this is this region right here. We found that area, all right? Units squared because it's an area all right so i mean this last couple examples were were just to show that we can actually um do things in terms of horizontal rectangles right um functions of y not just functions of x it's the same exact idea um that that is um the end of 7.1 but i will be making but there will be also another um, video where I do advanced examples of area, all right, which I highly recommend that you do watch. So that was the end of 7.1. Wasn't that fun? If you think I made a mistake somewhere, you're probably right. Tell me all about it in the comments. If you feel you learned something from me in this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but more importantly, Share it. Share this video with your classmates. And remember, you don't have to like math in order to be good at it. But you do have to be good at it. I am Jose Orozco. Goodbye.